Coming up in this FinCast, something you don't get to say every day, and that is I just received jellyfish in the mail. At my store in North Canton, Ohio, on Ocean Rift Aquatics, we use Chemipure in our main retail displays. We put 12 bags in the sump and allow it to do the main part of our filtration outside the live rock. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I want to talk about a whole new way of thinking about aquariums. No, we're not going to change the whole aquarium world. We're not going to change the aquariums you know, but we're going to add to what you know about what you can keep in some sort of a vessel that contains water in your home. How about that? And I'm talking about jellyfish. If you look behind me, and I'll be taking you a little bit closer along for the journey, I am acclimating jellyfish in a desktop jellyfish aquarium right here in my office. I kind of think about having desktop jellyfish or jellyfish in your home the way I think about, uh, I'm a cyclist, I think about mountain bikes. When mountain bikes came out back in the late 80s, the early 90s, who knew that you, you could build a bicycle that you could ride in the woods and that you wouldn't just be riding on the sidewalks or riding to the store or getting on the road and going out and riding across Vermont or California. I mean, mountain bikes changed the way that we think about bicycles and they came and they stayed and it was it was something that sort of arrived and and just like jellyfish now we're starting to think of something else that can be kept in your home for enjoyment and honestly when you look at these jellyfish to to create not just enjoyment but this sort of sort of overall calm and peaceful nature that comes with the jellies just sort of gently pulsing in the current and now you can have that on your desktop and so for the past couple of years I've been traveling as you know to the trade shows and I've been seeing sort of this emerging sector it's been very small with the shows but it's been there with companies doing these jellyfish desktop jellyfish tanks jellyfish art has been one of the leaders there uh, and, and you've seen different cylindrical solutions to ways for people to keep jellyfish in their house and so this is the very latest it's the desktop uh, it's from jellyfish art and it's their desktop cylinder it's only two gallons and it'll hold three jellyfish uh, and it's really amazing how far this technology has come it's a fantastic design oh i mean i just love the little jellyfish they're just the cutest thing in the world uh, i think it'd be an interesting like centerpiece in your home somewhere so before I get into the whole unboxing thing and taking you through the process, taking you through the setup, and of course I'll have links to Jellyfish Art and all their really actually very strong how-to videos on their website. Let me just tell you that one of the, the things about jellyfish that you wondered about and when you ever heard about it back in the day is you couldn't take them and just put them in your aquarium because the jellies would get stuck in the corners or the filters would suck them up or something would happen and you couldn't get the flow right and because they don't they're spineless they're brainless and because they're literally or you know sort of that gelatin type of material that they're made out of they're so fragile and so in order for this to work People had to come up with ways to keep them suspended in the water. I can tell you that I know enough that jellyfish are heavy that if the water current doesn't keep them floating up, they will sink to the bottom and then they're liable to be sucked up or damaged by the filtration. So once people started figuring out how to keep the jellies suspended and then you add the relative uh, ease of what we have with today's LED technology in terms of the lights and illuminating these jellyfish and making them as beautiful as they really are um, they were well on their way to being able to provide something that you can keep at home and enjoy and that's just what we're going to do in this FinCast. Okay here we go so my jellyfish nano cylinder arrived in the mail uh, it all came in one piece it's a very light box and let's take a look at the unboxing uh, very nicely packaged and this box includes everything that you need there's salt in there to mix with the water so you create perfect salt water conditions for the jellyfish there's a, a pump that circulates the water which keeps the jelly suspended uh, the LED lighting uh, a special uh, remote control uh, lighting unit so you can change the pattern of the color of the lights there's uh, two good instruction booklets with with lots of good background on how to set it up and and what these jellyfish are all about these are moon jellyfish uh, you get a hydrometer and you get a small packet of chemi pure blue which can be used in aquariums and also in this case uh, for your jellyfish and it just keeps the water uh, nice and pure 
setup of the Jellyfish Cylinder Nano was very straightforward. All you have to do is follow the online video. It took me uh, literally less than half an hour to add all the pieces. You put the light in, they show you how to insert the very quiet pump, by the way, uh, and where to put it, and then there's airline tubing, uh, and then there's a sensor that you can use with your remote control for the LED lighting system. But by and large, this is a very simple simple system to put together. If you can put together an aquarium with a hang on back filter, you certainly can go through this process. It is not difficult. That cylinder holds exactly two gallons of water. They do include a salt packet to create your salt water, which will give you uh, a 1.024 reading of your specific gravity, which is basically what salt water is in the ocean, 1.024, 1.025. And so you dump that into your water and you're good to go. Now, I happen to have an RODI water system because I have a reef, so I decided I'd go ahead and mix it in my water room. I, and for good measure, I always uh, mix my salt water with a paint stirrer on the end of an electric drill. But in reality, you'll be dumping this water in the jellyfish uh, aquarium and you'll be letting it run for a couple of days while you wait for your jellyfish to arrive in the mail so the water and the salt should get mixed up very well long before the jellyfish ever get here. So to a certain extent this is overkill but that's just the way I do salt water and that's the way I did it this time. At that point I put the water in the aquarium and now it was time for me to go to the computer. I typed in my code that came on the postcard that came with the Jellyfish Cylinder Nano and sent everything off to the folks at Jellyfish Art. And now all I have to do is wait for my jellyfish to arrive in the mail. Thank you. So if it was exciting to get the Jellyfish Cylinder in the mail, imagine how I felt when two days later, here comes the FedEx guy and the jellyfish actually arrived. The temperature at my house that day was uh, approximately 50 degrees and the jellies were in good shape. I brought them in the house. I had to go to work and I left them in the house where it was 70 degrees. But when I took them out of the bag, everybody was happy and healthy and they were pulsing in the bag. And also uh, the food arrived with the jellyfish and a nice brush to keep the aquarium clean. Nice soft brush so you don't scratch the, uh, the aquarium. The acclimation process uh, is well spelled out online at jellyfishart.com. It's very similar to when you uh, put fish in your aquarium. And I decided uh, to do the one or two hours of slow acclimation for the jellies to make sure that the packing water and the water in my aquarium were exactly the same, or at least as far as the jellies were uh, concerned. So I decided to do one to two hours of slowly adding tank water to the jellies in the supplied shipping bag and again there's a nice video at jellyfishart.com over time I added several cups of tank water and then I returned two and a half hours later I actually went to work and, and came back and it was time to release the jellies so I released the jellies and a couple of notes from the folks at Jellyfish Art. Uh, they say they may pulse slowly or not at all in the very beginning. They may sink to the very bottom, which is what mine did, or they may float. Uh, and basically, this is the jellies getting used to the salinity in the uh, cylinder, and that is described as normal and nothing to be concerned about. Uh, the other thing you want to worry about is the flow in this aquarium. You, there's an adjustment valve that will adjust how much water or how much air is flowing from the air pump, which is what's circulating the water, and you do want bubbles showing up in the top of the, uh, of the cylinder and you can see that here in the video and then at the top of the aquarium and this is spelled out very clearly in the instructions that come there is a small vertical groove that I want to say is an inch to three quarters of an inch long I haven't measured it but you want the water top off to be within that groove you don't want it to be above it and you don't want it to be below it and that seems to be key in terms of getting the proper circulation for the jellies and keeping them suspended in the middle of the aquarium I will tell you that when I ran the tank at full bubble, I did notice one jellyfish getting slightly stuck on one of the intake grooves in the back, but as soon as I slowed it down, everything was fine. Okay, so now it's the next day. There's the jellyfish aquarium, the jellyfish pulsing happily, the LED lights are working, and everything seems to be 
just fine. Forgot to mention a couple of things that I did along the way that I didn't take video. The uh, package arrives with something called Jelly Bio, which is essentially a bottle of bacteria. You add three capfuls of this right after you put the water in the aquarium. What that is is beneficial nitrifying bacteria that helps break down the waste or the uneaten food, and you definitely want that in your tank so you don't get an ammonia spike, which can be toxic to anything living in any aquarium. So the Jelly Bio does come with it. I did add it. I just didn't mention it along the way. And then here's the hydrometer. Actually, still I still have the water in it, uh, but that tells you what the salinity of your water is, and you can see I'm right in the middle of the safe zone there. The instructions call for 1.024, and I'm at 1.022. Two, so I might have just a little bit too much water and not quite enough salt, but the jellies are doing fine, and I have found with my reef tank that those are safe parameters, but I'll try and manage that up a little bit to 1.024. So I guess when you look at this philosophically, that is, you have to ask yourself the question, is this the next big thing in aquarium keeping? I mean, will we be keeping jellies regularly? Will we be keeping big tanks full of jellyfish in our home? I suspect maybe that we probably will. And it, you know, will it be a part of the hobby that you know, reef aquarium keepers are, are very interested in, or the, or the shrimp, or people who keep community fish, or will this be more of a lifestyle thing? People who just want sort of that, that passive um, the serenity that comes from maybe having jellyfish in their living room, but couldn't really care less about the jellyfish as a hobby. Uh, I don't know how I feel about jellyfish as a hobby. Right now, I think it's the cool factor and the serenity that, that I'm looking for. Uh, so, you know, will jellyfish become to aquariums what mountain biking was to cycling way back in the day? And you know, will it become a whole new avenue that's that's there for us to explore and enjoy? I guess we, we just don't know yet. It's very early in the game. But for now, now, I'm day one into keeping my own jellyfish for the very first time. I'm pretty happy about it. And I think this is something that, uh, you know, that it, it's going to be interesting to, to see how it goes going forward. By the way, at MACNA this year, the Marine Aquarium Conference of North America, where these were essentially, these cylinders were unveiled, I did do an interview with Joe Turner, who was one of the guys heading up the company, had some good answers to some of the basic questions. Uh, there probably are a lot of other questions you might have about these moon jellyfish, temperature, parameters, how to keep them, how long they live, that kind of stuff. All that good information is at jellyfishart.com, and I'll put some links to that in the description down below. And more than anything, I want to hear what you guys think about Jellyfish, jellyfish keeping, the future of jellyfish, whether it's cool, whether it's not as interesting as a reef, whether it's not as interesting as cichlids, you know, whatever it is that maybe shrimp, whatever it is maybe you're keeping right now. So definitely send me some comments down below and, and let's see what people think about it. I appreciate you tuning in. We'll keep you posted on how this jellyfish project is going. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next FinCast.